Welcome to episode number seven of our PLC and HMI development project in which we're building a simple street light system. So on the PLC side, just as a little reminder, we have code which is alternating between green, yellow and red on two different lights. And on the HMI, it looks something like this. So you have a normal street light traffic system. So it goes to yellow to red, while the other one changes to green, yellow, red, and then they alternate one after another. We also have a system control screen which of course in this play simulation is not going to be shown but if I stop this and open up the system control you'll notice that we can change the timers as well that being said if we go back to the PLC I wanted to mention a couple of things so first of all we have code which is not tied into external outputs and of course, there's no inputs as well to confirm that the lights have been uh, created. So in this episode, we're going to be going over that scheme. We're going to be adding modules. I'm going to be explaining how to select modules in terms of hardware, which is an important skill as a PLC programmer. And I do this on a daily basis as a systems integrator. So without any further delay, let's get started with today's video. Before we get started with today's video, we just wanted to quickly point out all the great content we've been releasing on the Solus PLC YouTube channel. And this includes industrial automation, PLC programming, as well as HMI development. And if you enjoy this type of content, we would really appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell in order to receive the latest and greatest content we will be posting to the channel. So I wanted to mention one additional thing before we jump into the tutorial, as a couple of you have been asking me about where you can find this code. So if you go into my GitHub page, which is essentially github.com slash vromanov89, then you can find a an array of different repositories. But the one that you're looking for is going to be this slash Solus PLC development. And if you click on the name, you can also find the link here. So slash Solus PLC underscore development. Then you can definitely download the exact same file that I'm using on this specific PLC. You can also go back in time through the commits and go back to later revisions. If something has been added or changed or deleted, you can definitely look into this, download it and play with it on your own. Uh, computer if you have studio 5000 that being said let's go back into the plc and before we start adding modules so we do need to save the program so i'm going to hit save i'm going to hit yes just like i do every single time that i go offline in order to make some changes i'm going to then click on this remote run and i'm going to disconnect from my controller by saying go offline and here in the embedded uh, discrete IO on my processor. Remember that it's a 1769 L24 ER QB1 BPLC. So it's a compact logics which is able to accept modules to the right side of it. And I made a video recently where I, where I integrate an analog card, but here we're going to be dealing with digital inputs and outputs. So let's think about this just for a second. So we have a light which is essentially turning on physical lights on the street. So it's going to be a green, yellow, red, and then there's going to to be a light to green, yellow, and red. So these are digital outputs. They're essentially on and off switches, which are turning on lights. So think of them as relays or maybe coils in the field. So we do need some kind of a digital output. Also, what I've mentioned before is that in a system, uh, doesn't matter if it's a street light or it's perhaps some kind of a tank filling system or a valve system, you always have some kind of a feedback. So when you try to open a certain valve, you want the feedback that the valve has been opened. And a system that doesn't have feedback is, um, it's not uncommon, but it's essentially a lot more prone to errors. So we're also going to be looking for an input, input feedback. And in case of light, they can either be on or off so it's essentially going to be one single feedback back from the light when we tell it to come on has it actually been turned on so that should tell us that it's going to be a digital signal back to the plc now of course when you go into this expansion io and you add a you want to add a new module you will notice that you have a lot of different options and one thing that you can choose of course is to simply go with these numbers and go through uh, what you need essentially by the description that being said if you go online and if you search for the compact logic selection guide you will notice that there's going to be a manual which is going to list all the different modules that you can use. So this is the 1769 compact IO modules since they are compatible with my PLC. It essentially looks like this um, L2 controller. So this is going to be the exact model. 
That being said, if we scroll down, we'll notice that there's going to be some AC digital mod modules. And typically nowadays I prefer DC as much as possible. So I would usually have those instead of the AC versions because of um, arc, arc flash essentially, if you're going below 50 volts, then you're going to be safe. So that's just a consideration depending on the plants or locations that you're in, you might consider the AC digital modules. That being said, let's keep on scrolling down. I'm not going to go into too many details, but essentially here we are in DC digital modules. So first of all, First of all, we do notice the catalog number, which is the number that we're going to be adding in Studio 5000, but we also have different other characteristics which should be very important to us. So the number of inputs and outputs, you will, number, you will notice that it does vary by card. So there's going to be 16 inputs. There's also going to be 32. And then in certain cards, you have sync and source inputs and then you have relays so there's going to be a lot of different flavors that you can add and essentially you can definitely for our system we can do you know six we need a total of six outputs and then we need a total of six inputs so for sure this card isn't really going to work so we can either get two of these or we can start thinking of something separating the cards. So we can get one card, which is an input and one card, which is an output. And typically I would prefer the 32 input cards over the 16 input cards for the simple fact that you essentially get, get the card at a cheaper rate per input than you'd get the 16 input model. So anyways, the point being is that this would be probably the preferred choice for me in, as far as the inputs go. And on the output side, Similarly, we can find a card which does 32 outputs as well. So do notice that there's not going to be a lot of difference between those cards. So for example, 32 outputs, eight outputs, they're both uh, essentially outputting 24 volts. But you do notice that the backplane current, so this card is going to take out essentially double the amount of current of the other one, which is a consideration perhaps if you're dealing with, you know, a whole lot of outputs, but we should be okay with just two of these cards. So that being said, we do need to write this down and usually I'd create a bill of materials for what I need to purchase for my system. But in this case, since we're doing a quote unquote simulation, we can just start adding this. So I can just copy this number go back into my Studio 5000 and I can start searching for this specific card. So I'm going to double click the card and here I'm going to give it a name. So since it's going to be in the local rack, I usually like to give it an input and this is going to be digital and this is going to come into slot two as indicated by the side here. I'm also going to keep the module definition as is. This is of course going to depend on the final hardware that you receive from Rockwell and you can flash the revision as well. I'm going to click OK and that's going to be the first card which appears on the bottom. I'm going to switch back into my spreadsheet here and find this 1769 OB32. Do notice also that depending on your location, you might have the requirement of sync and source or also on the sensor side, side if it's PNP versus NPN, the US or the North American standards is to have inputs which are syncing and outputs which are sourcing. But of course, you can find, you know, different cards as you as you need. So for example, there's the output card is only going to be a source card, but you can definitely find the sync model here at the bottom if that's what your preference is. Let's go back here and then we're going to search for the other card. I'm going to double click this and similarly, this is going to be an output card and this is going to be digital and slot three. I'm going to hit OK. And those are going to be the two cards that we're going to be using. That being said, we do need to set up the input and output structure. So I'm going to scroll up to the uh, to our project and here from the main, as you remember, we're only jumping to the two subroutines, but I do want to create a subroutine, which is going to be my inputs and my outputs. So add new subroutine and I'm just going to use the next letter uh, or digit, although usually I would place these at the beginning. So this is going to be inputs. OK. And then we can create another one, which is going to be outputs. Uh, so actually, it's not going to be structured text. Let's go back here. Uh, we need to delete this. So it's definitely not going to be in the structured text, although that's also acceptable. So let's do new routine. And we're going to change that to ladder diagram. Underscore zero four underscore inputs. 
and one more underscore zero five underscore outputs and here i'm just going to do a basic definition i'm not going to debounce anything so on the output side we're going to have some very basic logic and this is done every single time that I create a new program, essentially. I never use the outputs directly. That being said, let's start with the output card. So this is going to be right here. Once again, just as a reminder, the module is going to be under local 303 outputs. Let's go back into controller tags and scroll down, switch to monitor, scroll down local 30 data. And this is going to be our first output. Let's control tab back to this window. And this is going to be the first output. And here we can just start giving them a name. And I prefer giving them a descriptive name of just the input and then giving a description on top of that. So this is going to be local underscore in underscore D. And then I could say, so actually, yeah, it's going to be digital and then let's do zero. Um, it's not going to be in this is this is the output side local output digital zero now I'm going to copy paste this in four five six so remember I have six different lights to turn on so I'm just going to create those six I'm not going to create all of them although I do recommend that you create all 32 for your card regardless if you're going to have spares or not let's see here so there's going to be one two so just very simple tag passing but essentially uh, what this allows me to do really quickly is that if the output fails for whatever reason i can really quickly redirect it just by changing this last like i can change this instead of having to trace all of them being used in the program if they are used in different locations so in any case that's that makes sense we're going to create a new tag this is going to be scoped on the on the controller side and i'm just going to make that a boolean array of 256 create and like i've mentioned here we're going to start labeling the io so remember in the not in here but in the light system so we have light green light one green light one yellow light one red so we can go and label them as such so light one green light tur turn on so this is going to be the label that we're going to reapply light one this is yellow so it's very important to leave a trace on when you develop your software extremely extremely important to leave comments to make sure that it's understood what's going on i'm just going to copy this and then put this light two yellow and then light three red light two red light two red turn on and so the way i would handle this as i would still go back into the light system and i would pass these on so you can definitely just put the tag into this output right here but usually this is this becomes like a request so light one underscore green but it's a request and the actual output is energized on the next line so this might seem convoluted to you at first, but there's a lot of advantages to using essentially extra tags that you may or may not, I'm just going to close the routine. You may not uh, see the benefit at the beginning, but as you start becoming more and more proficient in ladder logic, you will notice that it's a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to troubleshoot. So essentially you get the request to turn on based on the timer, and then the light green actually goes out and turns on your output. So that's going to be there. And I'm just going to control C and then paste a bunch of these. So light one yellow is going to turn on input one. And then the next one is going to be red. And that's going to be turn on number two. So your code becomes extremely, extremely reapplicable, and it's easy to navigate what's going on because once again, you have a little bit more rungs than what you would typically expect, but everything is highly descriptive and you know exactly what's going on. Let's see here. And then last but not least, we have the red. 
Okay, so we're also going to set up the inputs, which are going to be the feedback from our system. So let's see here, simple, simple run. Let's go back to the card. So the input card is going to be placed in slot number two. So remember the tag is going to be local to input. Let's scroll all the way up, controller tags, monitor tags, and then local. So we can close the three, we can go into two input data. And these are going to be the individual 32 bits of different tags that are going to come in. So I'm going to copy this first one and then paste this in. And then this is going to be, so similarly how we did with the outputs, remember this is local out D0. This is going to be local in D0. We're going to create this array, new tag and then Boolean 256, create. And so the description here is going to be very similar. Once again, we want to stay consistent. So this is green light turn on. And this is going to be light one green light confirmed on confirmed. Confirmed on. So this is essentially the feedback that we get back from our system. One, and then one. So it may seem tedious, like I said at first, but it's well worth to set up the system that way. It's very easy to navigate your different subroutines. So you see exactly where the light system is controlled. You see exactly where the HMI is controlled. You see exactly where the inputs and outputs are coming from. So somebody who's coming in, you know, with a little bit less knowledge than yourself is going to troubleshoot your system and be very thankful that um, you program this way and essentially not have to call you at a late time of the day. So very, very important to leave comments, like I said, as well. So we're just going to finish this video by finalizing the comments. And we're going to be implementing some of these, some of these inputs as well as, as far as the alarms go. So let's do this local two. And you can see me, I'm doing this live just to show you pretty much what the experience is like to program some of this stuff and it could be like i said could take a little bit of time anyway so that's the inputs we're also going to go back with the controller since we've made quite a few changes we do need to download to the controller since we've modified the hardware it's always a requirement there's no way around it let's go download and everything should be okay i don't believe we made any mistakes in our logic so it should be able to compile and then download to the plc and of course confirm that we can go back into run mode and we should be able to be fine that being said i think it might throw an error because i don't have the actual hardware installed on the plc so it actually might not um let's see here it shouldn't fault out but it might not necessarily like the fact that we don't have the hardware let's see here So I think the PLC is okay. That being said, we do need to add a couple of things which we missed. So going back to main, we didn't jump to the input and output subroutine. So let's go underscore zero four, underscore zero five. Yeah, so it did fault out as a major fault. Let's go here to the faults. So IO fault, at least one of the required connections not established before going into run mode. So this is common. If you don't have the hardware, it's really difficult to, to practice essentially sending outputs to an actual card. That being said, uh, you get the idea how we chose the different inputs and outputs. I think I'm going to modify the logic slightly so we can move forward without having this fault. But essentially, in a real case scenario, that's how you would pick the different cards. You would select the modules, you would add them to your program, and then be able to send outputs and receive, of course, inputs from the system. Thank you guys so much for watching my content. If you have any questions on this topic, make sure to leave them in the comment section below. And if you can spend five seconds of your time liking as well as sharing that video if you've enjoyed it that would mean absolutely the world to me and if you have any suggestions for the channel what kind of hardware software i should be covering then make sure to leave that down there as well see you next time take care bye